I've been more than just a little bit obsessed with Grand Theft Auto V lately. I reviewed the game, and I've been playing it for weeks. I thought this would be a good opportunity, now that we finally have access to the map, to go back and look at the debut trailer and see if it holds up to the final product. This will also give me a chance to show you guys why Rockstar is so good at making trailers. I know some of you get frustrated because they rarely show gameplay in their trailers, but it's done intentionally to help you appreciate the high production costs that go into their work. They want you to think of their games as more than just games. And that's the lesson. Turn your game into a movie. Trailers can be considered movies already. They're the length of some short films, they tell a story, and the most epic trailers don't use a frame of in-game assets. But you can show the footage from the game and still make it look like your material belongs on the big screen. When you produce a trailer, always imagine it's being shown to a packed movie house. Will the audience cheer for your trailer or talk through it? Rockstar knows people are going to dissect every single image they release for each Grand Theft Auto game, so not only are the shots stuffed with details, they're also all framed cinematically, so you can't tell which one's a mission, which one's a cutscene, and which one is just a glimpse of the open world. The debut trailer for Grand Theft Auto V premiered on November 2nd, 2011, 22 months before the game was released. For a while, it was our only source of information. Some of its secrets were immediately apparent. GTA V takes place in Los Santos. It features dogs, golf, jet skis, yoga, jewelry heists, fighter jets, and real estate. Some cues were a little less obvious. The liquor store in the Sonora Desert sits beneath Trevor's meth lab. The Tequila La Club is one of the properties you can purchase. Michael appears to run a red light in front of a Los Santos police station. And Franklin makes a few brief cameos in a red convertible with an adjustable top. The rest either showcase the diversity of the pedestrians and environments or pay tribute to the last time this series vacationed on the West Coast in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. After recently revisiting almost every location in the trailer, we found some of them to be practically identical to when they were first shown, while others had subtle differences and a few spots had undergone some big changes. So while we can focus on the finer points, we're avoiding the following shots that are too quick to recreate. This pass under a sign for the 5 freeway, this jet flying downtown, Franklin's slick turn past the Mile High Club, and this random burnt out car. The first two shots in the trailer were among those we found to be very similar with the game released two years later. The trailer opens on Vespucci Beach at sunset, just behind a lifeguard tower. The spot was easy to find, as this is the only tower with a surfboard in front. The next shot moves north to the Pleasure Pier on Del Perro Beach, and all of the signs and buildings here match the final product. We go back to Vespucci for an airborne shot number three, climbing above some palm trees on the boardwalk to get another perspective of downtown. 30 seconds into the trailer, we see a couple doing yoga on their balcony in the Vinewood Hills. A bunch of the articles from the trailer made it into the game, including the exercise bike, purse, telescope, towel on the glass partition, and the DJ setup below with the speaker and table knocked over. You can't go inside the house, but it does have a visible interior. We tried to keep the time of day as it appears in the trailer for our capture, but it's hard to tell if the differences in color were due to the weather or refinements to the engine in the last year or two of the game's development. That said, many of the shots were consistent when compared to their counterparts from the final game. Franklin driving through Vespucci Beach and Michael cruising along Vinewood Boulevard both match up with their trailer footage. The village of Homeless under the freeway has a different layout of tents and graffiti, but the structure is the same. Muscle Sands and the Mile High Club skyscraper are easily identifiable, and we were even able to track down these cargo loaders in the southern port. There are some strange differences, however. The Ace Liquor sign outside of Trevor's meth lab glows in the trailer, but not in the game. Hole number eight at the Los Santos Golf Club is a 169-yard par three in the trailer, but was stretched out to a 541-yard par five in the game. And there is clearly much more foliage in the gameplay shown two years earlier. We couldn't find these specific rigs from the Murrieta oil field, so they might have gotten shuffled around. We also had difficulty tracking down this trailhead beneath Mount Chiliad. We found the correct side of the mountain, but like the golf course, many of the trees from the trailer were gone. The first time we see Michael DeSanta, he's standing on a balcony or the rooftop of the Viceroy Hotel facing downtown. He doesn't own any property here, and we never found any missions at the Viceroy during the story. The home we see being foreclosed in the trailer also exists in the final version of Los Santos, but looks very different. 
In-game, there are no recycling bins in front of the house or anywhere else in the street, the house number is no longer painted onto the sidewalk, and the patches of grass are missing along with the giant tree casting a shadow on the entire property. For a brief moment in the trailer, we see a homeless man, presumably an homage to Nico Bellic, standing beside the Del Perro freeway. The spot is real, placing him right next to the freeway's on-ramp. Unfortunately, the sun doesn't rise or set in the south, where the camera appears to be facing. We also see a crop duster flying low and spraying pesticides on unexpected workers. While crop dusters do exist in GTA 5, and there is a large vineyard in the Tongva Hills, you can't dispense pesticides while roaming the world, or during any mission we played. This is strange, because crop dusters could spray crops in GTA San Andreas. One final inconsistency occurs when we're given a sneak peek at the mission The Jewel Store Job, where Michael and crew pretend to be working for the Bug Stars Pest Control Company. It was later revealed in trailers that you could perform this mission two ways, but in the final game, if you choose to gas the building and put the patrons to sleep, you never see Michael and crew exit the van. They also enter the store discreetly, where in the trailer, Michael kicks the front door open. These changes are a bit weird, but not surprising given the two-year gap between when Rockstar finally released these images to the world and when the game was completed. What's curious is why these specific alterations were made, highlighting the likely graphical streamlining that took place to make the world not only beautiful, but playable. The biggest changes we saw between trailer and game were decorative elements like trees and bushes going missing, and lighting not being the same, possibly due to weather. Rockstar is such a high-profile company with such a terrific track record that they can get away with showing a bum on a street corner in a game announcement, and their fans will get excited. More than tease the scope of the game, these quick scenes each hold the potential of new improvements to the franchise. We didn't realize Franklin was a playable character when we first saw him, and there are more scandalous spoilers in some of GTA V's later trailers that we glossed over because we weren't given the whole image. This is the benefit of thinking of your game as a movie, if only during the production of its advertising. When you think of the campaign as a story instead of a string of missions, or the map as a world instead of a confined space, you can take something as simple as a couple walking on the beach with a dog and get people excited thinking about the possibilities. You don't have to tell everyone all the details right away. Invite them to experience your game slash movie for a while and leave the rest up to their imagination. Rockstar doesn't use raw gameplay when they announce a new game because they want you to imagine living in that world, not just watch someone controlling characters that are living in it. There's so many details in every GTA trailer, more than most others, which is why we do pop locks on pretty much every single one of them. Other trailers that turn games into movies include the debut trailer for Call of Duty Black Ops 2, the first in-game trailer for L.A. Noir, the story trailer for Defiance, and the Pirate's Life on the High Seas trailer for Assassin's Creed 4. Don't miss a special Trailer Academy for GT's Next Gen Showdown next Thursday, October 3rd. And let me know what you think the next generation of game trailers are going to look like on Twitter at GameTrailersVO. See you next time.